The planets in our solar system emerged from a vast swirling cloud of ice, dust, and gas. The same ingredients can still be found on Earth today in places like Iceland, where volcanic ash mixes with icy glaciers. So if you want to build a giant planet like Saturn, this pile of raw material here is a great visual analog. There's a lot of oxygen and hydrogen in the universe. That makes water. That makes water ice. And the stuff initially that made the solar system is basically this stuff here. It's dirty ice, water ice, with a little bit of, a little bit of rocky and metallic minerals left in there out there in the cold of space. Four and a half billion years ago, a vast cloud of dirty ice particles shrouded in hydrogen and helium collapses under its own gravity. And at the center, a new star, our sun, sparks into life. The heat of the new star melts the ice closest to it and blows away the gas, leaving only rocky debris behind. But farther out, icy material and gas survive. A boundary forms, a frost line between the rocky inner cloud and the icy gas beyond. Once you fired up that campfire, if you will, what will be left behind in the inner solar system is going to be this stuff, the silicate minerals you make a planet like the Earth from. But far away from the sun, where it's colder, you cross the frost line, and what's out there is still cold enough to maintain the, uh, the, the, the ice behind, and there's a lot of it there. At first, you make a sort of a solid core of this material, but when you reach a critical mass, you've got enough gravitational influence to start to directly draw in some of the hydrogen and helium in the interplanetary cloud. Saturn's huge solid core, now 10 to 20 times the size of the Earth, generates relentless gravity and draws in gas. The bigger this gas ball gets, the more material it sucks in. Saturn's massive gravity then gets to work on its fledgling atmosphere, compressing it. And like any gas under pressure, it gets hot, seriously hot. Even today, Saturn's high pressure atmosphere heats its core to 21,000 degrees, twice the temperature of the surface of the sun. And it's this heat rising up, which forms Saturn's distinct bands and drives its extreme weather. Saturn is actually rotating very quickly. It's a large planet. It rotates once on its axis about every 10 hours. So as the weather comes up from the interior, it gets smeared out into bands. At Saturn's North Pole, the bands do something that at first glance seems impossible. There is a gigantic vortex, a spinning region of air that's shaped like a perfect hexagon. You have waves of pressure, density, and temperature that start to interact with each other. And these waves can actually interfere and become one big wave that goes all the way around the planet. 